Uh, hello, everyone. I think we can uh, we can make a make a start. So, um, uh, on behalf of the uh, regional group of the Institute of Structural Engineers uh, here in the UAE, I'd like to welcome everyone to our first uh, CPT doc um, of the year. Uh, we hold the talks uh, once a month, and uh, we get uh, various speakers in to to talk about. Um, the, the discipline of structural engineering and in general, the, the construction industry. And tonight's talk is by Fisher, Fixings in Middle East. And our speakers are Tinu Thomas, Technical Manager of the UAE, and Mustafa El Hosni, General Manager of the Middle East. And they're gonna talk about casting channels in concrete. So I'll now hand over to Tinu to uh, to start his presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Okay, again, uh, once again, good afternoon, uh, everyone. So I hope uh, my screen is visible. So uh, today, yes. as, uh, as, we, as we agreed, we will talk a bit about casting channels. What is, uh, you know, uh, the newest, latest offering for casting channels, how can we define, uh, redefine the connections in concrete using casting channels? So uh, today uh, for this, we have, uh, you know, two panelists, myself, Tinu Thomas and Mustafa. So we would try to give some value addition to your evening by, by you know, uh, sharing our experience and uh, a new product line uh, code, how we design and so on. So before we go ahead into casting channels, we would also, uh, we are proud to introduce something else. So it is called a bow bot. So always, you know, in construction, there are a lot of challenges regarding productivity, regarding safety of workers. Installing anchors is always a hassle. You have, you know, millions of anchors to be uh, installed in a building project. So uh, we have launched a product which is yet, yet to be announced in UAE, but it's globally announced and it's uh, on sale in Germany. It's a small video. It won't take much, uh, but it gives an idea about what this robot does. Our vision, a construction site characterized by huge gains in productivity through digitalization and automation, free from tiring work, so you can have gains in productivity through digitalization and automation, free from tiring work, so you can have more time for other jobs in a healthier environment. This vision is now becoming reality. Take advantage of the BowBot. The automatic fastening robot drills and installs anchors on ceilings, walls, and floors faster and more efficiently. The BowBot's large working radius guarantees maximum productivity. Tool changing is fully automatic. The Fisher BowBot works extremely fast and precisely therefore keeping projects on time and on budget. Fisher assists you when installing fastening points. We provide a complete service, starting with the 3D scan, to dimensioning, drilling and inserting anchors, all the way to documentation. Revolutionize your construction site and increase productivity with a Fisher Bowbot. That's a quick dive into the future. Uh, we are expecting to uh, have this product in Middle East by uh, third quarter of this year. So it's not too far. And we are also in talks on how to you know, do 3D scanning, how to integrate uh, the drilling operations with BIM and so on. So coming back to our topic today, the most common product to connect uh, any application to concrete are anchors. And we have a huge experience uh, of, uh, of connections, designs, and installation of anchors in concrete. 
Based on these experience, there are also challenges. So post-installed anchors, such as chemical anchors, are very good. They take extremely high load. They are very strong. They can avoid corrosion if you select the right uh, material. Mechanical anchors are fast, also strong, and they can resist corrosion. And then there are light fixings like, uh, you know, nail guns and uh, gas actuated tools, which are also very fast. Now, these anchors have been here in the industry for quite some time. Most of the application, 90% of the application are installed using one of these methods. But there are also some challenges we see when we use these systems such as clashing of rebars. So when we drill a hole into existing concrete, RCC, we might clash existing rebars. We may have a concrete edge failure, which cannot be improved because the concrete itself is the weak point. There could be damage of rebars, which is accidental by drilling. The time taken for installation, for example, if you're going with a mechanical solution like these, you need to keep the anchors, torque it, and then bring your application. Or if you're going with chemical anchors, you have to wait for the chemical is cured and so on. So it's a little bit time consuming. How can we avoid these? So cast-in channels is a solution which caters to uh, you know most of these challenges. It can take heavy loads. It's very fast because it's installed cast-in. There is flexibility because it's a long channel, which we will come to in a minute. And then also corrosion is taken care of by using the appropriate raw materials. I'll play a short video of our range of casting channels. As the global market leader and anchor industry, Fisher has been piloting and fixing technology by continuous improvement and providing the optimized innovative solution for building industries. Fisher cast-in channel systems have been granted ETA approval. The main compositions for Fisher cast-in channel includes one-time forming hot rolled or cold form C-channel anchors and accessories. The material is using ETA recognized one and surface can be treated with hot dip galvanized or zinc aluminum coating which is seismic resistant, high strength and corrosion resistant. In the applications of building facade, rail, and subway transportation, integrated pipeline tunnel, etc. Fisher cast-in channel systems have been more and more widely used, greatly improving the installation efficiency of post-installed fixing parts, reducing <coughs> potential risks in on-site work and maintenance cost. In building facade application, Fisher cast-in channel systems are widely utilized in the installation and structural bearing of facade panels. Fisher cast-in channel can be connected to facade assembly through channel bolts to achieve an effective connection of the entire facade system. Position and install Fisher cast-in channel in the concrete formwork. Place the steel mesh and fix the cast-in channel via self-tapping screws. Fill the concrete evenly throughout the casting form and remove the formwork after the concrete is fully solidified. The filler in the channel is removed by a rip line. Insert the channel bolt and rotate 90 degrees following the grooved curve. Freely adjust the bolts to the proper position. Install the facade bracket and tighten the nut. Fix facade frames and other accessories and then install the facade decoration panels. In this manner the facade system construction is completed. In railway and subway transportation areas, Fisher cast-in channel systems are widely applied in subway tunnel and other curved structures. The subway tunnel is composed of several arc prefabricated concrete parts extending longitudinally to form the entire tunnel. Fisher cast-in channel systems can be customized to fit different building or structures based on their individual features. For example, Fisher curved cast-in channel system can fully fit the arc structure of the tunnel and reach ideal fixing effects. Due to the special arc structure of the tunnel, formwork used for pouring concrete is made of special steel framework. Fisher cast-in channel could be fixed to the steel formwork by special bolts and nuts. Then reinforcement is placed and the concrete is evenly filled into the entire framework.
After the concrete is fully solidified, the formwork can be removed and the curved concrete panel is prefabricated. Remove the filler of the channel by rip line. Insert the channel bolt and rotate 90 degrees according to the grooved curve. Freely adjust the bolts to the proper position and finally install the matching system and equipment. Fisher cast-in channel systems can also be widely applied in integrated utility tunnels. It is mainly used for fixing Fisher Samotec systems. Integrated utility tunnels usually have rectangular structures in which main pipelines and ducts for civil infrastructural are laid. Fisher cast-in channel systems are used for the installation and carrying loads of these infrastructural pipelines and equipment and facilities to ensure normal operation. Position the cast-in channel in vertical formworks. After the reinforcement is placed, fix the cast-in channel in the framework, then pour the concrete. Remove the framework after the concrete is solidified. Remove the filler and the channel by rip line. Insert the channel bolt and freely adjust the bolts to the proper position. Then install Fisher cantilever arm. A comprehensive product introduction and technical training can be provided so that customers can fully understand Fisher cast-in channel systems and related applications. Fisher Technical Team will provide professional calculation service based on different architectural design requirements, concrete load-bearing capacity at different ambient environment, as well as fire-resistant, fatigue-resistant, and anti-corrosion will be fully considered to provide optimized fixing solution. Also, professional and complete on-site technical support service can be provided as well. During project execution phase, the whole process of tracking and guiding the installation and commissioning of the products will eliminate the customer's worries. Fisher has won wide recognition in the industry with its professional product technology and all-around high-quality service and is starting a new journey of fixing solution with innovative ideas. So this video explains quite a lot about the full range. Uh, I would say maybe 60% of the presentation is already covered in the video. But let's see uh, some details about the cast and channel, how the assortment works. So I'm sure you have all heard of, about the term cast and channel, but if you, if there are some of you, you, you new to this term, so cast and channel is basically a channel, as you see here, connected to an anchor, which could be welded or bolted or uh, connected with different types of mechanisms. And then it is embedded into the concrete. And there are special T-head bolts which could be attached to this once the connection is made. To make it simple, this is how it looks like. So you place these channels inside the concrete and then later on you can bring your base plate and insert special T-bolts. So if you can see my camera, this is a small section of casting channel so we place this inside concrete, and once the concrete is solidified, we can insert a T-bolt and twist it. And then later on, we can attach a base plate on top of it with nuts and washer. So it's, it's a very easy uh, solution. And this provides flexibility of loading in all three directions. And also, as you can see from this picture, it's a facade bracket. So here you can see, because of the length of the casting channel, you have adjustment in this direction as well as because of the slotted hole you have adjustment in this direction and of course the third direction which is the vertical direction you can have the possibility of adjustment by using packing in between so the benefits of custom channels are very really pretty straightforward there's high level of prefabrication especially when you have buildings as you saw in the video like uh, building uh, or tunnel projects where it is, uh, you know, like uh, concrete is cast in a factory and brought to the site, like precast structures, there is much higher benefits that you don't have to wait for drilling and uh, connection of anchors, ensure that the anchors are installed properly and so on. Extreme conditions like where you have dense reinforcement, let's say a uh, heavily reinforced core wall, you want to drill something, uh, let's say we need to fix something for the elevator beams or MEP structures. 
uh, some uh, slabs you have very uh, shallow uh, thickness high strength concrete is always a challenge to drill because it takes a lot of time to uh, achieve the required embedment depth for anchors if you're, you're applying post install and also you have the safety that you are not damaging any existing uh, reinforcement and in certain conditions drilling is not allowed because of uh, you know a possibility of cutting existing reinfo reinforcement at critical location easy and simple installation once the uh, casting channel is in place you just need as we saw in the video it's very easy you just need to insert with a t bolt and it's pretty uh, easy and fast and also buildings are becoming more and more smarter bim integration is a key uh, part of our market uh, these days so we know exactly where is uh, reinforcement where you need connections to be implemented so accounting to all of these cast in channels is the next go for fixing solution and of course health safety and of course environmental concerns are becoming more and more a uh, key requirement here so there is no dust created the health of the user who is drilling is is not damaged uh, because it's all cast in so there's an advantage from hsc point of view as well there's no noise there's no dust For example in data centers or projects where dust is a uh, concern this challenges can be avoided by cast in channel let's see the geometry of cast in channel mainly if you ask me the key important geometry is the width and height of the cast in channel as well as the anchorage depth so there are different heads of uh, cast in channel which we will go in the coming slides but most importantly the width height and the overall height or the embedment depth of the uh, cast in channel is a key geometrical parameter we have to consider there are different types of cast in channel uh cold formed and hot rolled so from the name itself i'm sure you can make it out what is the difference the main advantage is uh for cold formed the process is faster because we there's no uh effect of heat you just can take a sheet bend it and cold form whereas in hot roll you need to uh, uh you know roll the steel in elevated temperature higher temperature here you have the advantage of changing the shape for example a cold form section always will have the same thickness all around it whereas in hot roll uh, we have the possibility of strengthening certain areas so if you again see my camera this is a hot roll section you can see at the lip of the channel you have more thickness this is to prevent the lips from opening up so thereby taking higher load capacity whereas here in a cold form section you can see the thickness is the same all around the casting channels can be used anywhere in a slab it could be top of slab front of slab or front of wall also on bottom of slab there are you know n number of applications you can use casting channel but the most popular if you ask me are for facade brackets especially if the facade is unitized because unitized facades are huge the weights are higher you have uh, you know extremely high considerations of practicality because the crane is bringing a huge panel on site uh, we cannot expect the person to install an anchor you know after the panel is in place so always casting channel saves a lot of time and effort in a uh, huge facade installation of course we also see a lot of applications in the video such as metro and rail applications where you have tunnel curved or straight and thereby uh, we also have cast in channels which are curved customized according to the curvature of the building structure itself elevators is one of the key applications where you know always in the elevator shaft you have lot of reinforcement thereby you know installing some kind of elevator uh, utilities would be a challenge such as guide rails door supports etc so casting channels as we discussed you can apply loads in any three directions 
no problems. Here you can see, uh, here are some applications in a curved tunnel. You can see tunnels used are curved as well, which are custom made to take the curvature of the structure itself. There are also further utility applications such as, uh, you know, uh, in a railway tunnel, you have power supply, power supply uh, lines to be connected. You have, uh, you know, services below the railway prefabricated uh, concrete structure. You have, uh, you know, stations that have multiple services such as cable trays, pipes to be connected where drilling is, uh, could be a main challenge. So at Fisher, we have a huge assortment of cast and channels, starting from a very small cast and channel, uh, which is uh, this much, all the way to a huge cast, uh, range of cast and channels with uh, I-beams welded to it. And this makes us possible to uh, cater to a wide range of applications from load as well as application perspective. So I would like to uh, invite Mustafa now to give us some details about the calculations and design point of view of cast and channel. Uh, I will share my screen. So uh, is it uh, visible now? Uh, yes, it is, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Tino. So Tino spoke in briefly about the uh, range uh, and dimension measurement uh, advantage of casting channel. But when we talk about uh, design, we will focus today on design according to uh, EN 1992-4. Uh, not only designing according to the code is important, but also uh, what are the approval, what are the data available for the casting channel is also important. So in Fisher, we have already a European technical approval. Uh, and in this European technical approval, all the required uh, uh, factors for the failure modes are defined, which we'll uh, get to know now in, in the few slides, as well as uh, design according to fire as well. And we have also a seismic uh, test report for casting channel, which uh, also give us insurance that casting channel can be installed and can be designed on, under high seismic area. When we go through the code uh, 1992, uh, you will find that it's not only about designing casting channel, but it's also about designing any anchorage in concrete. So this code is applicable for design of uh, casting channel and for anchor port. But uh, I will explain also what is the difference in design between casting channel and normal anchor bolt in briefly. Uh, the main criteria uh, that you have to be sure that the casting channel is safe under tension and is safe under shear, of course. So uh, when you want to check tension force, uh, you have to know what are the failure mode. So the failure mode defined in the code is as you can see in the screen, we can define to two different main category in, in tension. So in tension, we have category which is related to the steel of the casting channel. So for example, steel failure for anchor itself. So this part or the steel failure between the connection between the anchor and the casting channel or the lip of the casting channel or the bolt or the casting channel itself when it works as a beam. So this five failure modes is related to the steel of the casting channel or the body of the casting channel. So it depends from company to company based on the geometry of the casting channel. The other failure mode, which is same like post installed anchor, uh, only there is few difference, uh, differentiation in the formula, which is failure modes, which is related to concrete. So we have, for example, pull out failure and concrete cone failure. So this failure mode is mainly depending on how much deep is the casting channel inside concrete, which we call edge effective, exactly same like anchor bulk, uh, and also about the strength of the concrete and uh, so on. These are the main uh, failure modes, which you have to be sure when we uh, design casting channel under tension. And as well as this is the main failure modes, uh, which you can see now when you design, design the casting channel under shear. So also same two categories. So you have 
category which is related to the steel or the geometry of the casting channel. So either the failure can happen on the lip or anchor also, or in the body of the casting channel itself, or shear force in the T-ball. This is possible. Or same like post installed anchor, you can have a failure either in edge when the casting channel is close to the edge, or it can happen uh, that spray out the part behind the casting channel can uh, bear off from the concrete. So uh, how we get this information or how we know uh, how to design? The two main uh, guides which we have to use when we designing the casting channel. So of course, you have to have your code with you, which you have all the information about formula codes. And also you must have the technical approval or the technical data sheet of the custom channel. So in Fisher, we have Euro, European technical approval, which will specify all the details of the geometry of the custom channel, which you need to uh, uh, finalize the design. I will give you an example. When you design the custom channel under, under tension failure, for example, you will see there is a different types of custom channel here. You will find this page in the approval. So this is table 10, for example, from the ATA approval. And we design the custom channel according to uh, steel failure. So in the approval, this value will be given. So you will know exactly that this fold, how much is the characteristic resistance and how much is the material safety factor. So the design load will be, for example, if I take this one, it will be 31 divided by 1.8. So this is the design value for the custom channel board, or we call it anchor, sorry. And also when you do, for example, for the connection between the anchor, casting channel anchor and the body of the casting channel, you can see here also the uh, characteristic loads are given in the approval and also the safety factor. It's important that you have to see the safety factor in the approval, not just to assume that the material safety factor will be always 1.8, because this safety factor, it it's, uh, depends on the yield and ultimate strength of the each part of the custom channel. So there is a formula actually in the code for the custom channel, but this is the output of the formula based on the characteristic of our channel. So already we calculated and we kept in the approval and we got the ATA approval for this but it can vary from company to another company. Also for the steel failure of uh, the lip, which is the main differentiation uh, between uh, hot rolled and cold rolled, you will find here the uh, load value for the casting channel. So, and also as well as the safety factor. For the hot rolled, of course, the lip is more stronger. So we'll find the uh, value for the lip failure is much higher than uh, cold formed casting channel. When we talk about the casting channel itself, now here we talk about the section of the casting channel, how, how we can get the loads. But now the casting channel itself, since it has anchor, so the, this, this, this anchor is working actually as hinge. So you can consider this area as a simple beam, or if we have another anchor, it can be as a continuous beam. And we will have a bending moment in the body of the casting channel itself. So also each casting channel has a bending uh, uh, moment capacity. So this is each section, and you will find also in the approval clearly defined that how much is our characteristic flexural strength or resistance, sorry, for the casting channel. And according to the distance or where is the location of the T-bolt, uh, it can easily be calculated uh, by any software or even manually, how much is the maximum bending moment on the custom channel and it can be compared with the resistance of the custom channel. This part, all this part is related to steel. When we come to concrete, as I told you, so concrete is not only related in the geometry of the custom channel, but it's also related to uh, another material which is concrete, and we know concrete very well from uh, the cause and regulation for concrete. So uh, the geometry is affecting two things, affecting the embedment depth on the casting channel. So this is called effective depth or embedment depth, and affecting the spacing between the anchors. So if, for example, we have single anchor bolt, this is same formula exactly of Boston installed anchor bolt. So we can have a cone failure like that, so which is having an area which is almost three times its effective. 
So three times this distance will equal SCRN, this part. So we have this area, which is giving us the resistance for concrete under tension. And this will be the capacity of tension for casting channel, for, for single anchor. In casting channel, usually we'll have at least two or three or four, depends on the length required. We have in fissure range up to six meters. So length is not a problem. So in here, we'll find that there is a, a interaction between the cone for each anchor. So each anchor will have its cone and we'll have the interaction, as you can see here in this figure. So in this interaction, so uh, we have to, uh, uh, to apply in the formula here, which is given in the code. And in this formula, we can easily calculate how much is the full capacity of the custom channel, which is installed in concrete. But what you can see here in this formula, exactly the same formula of post installed anchor. So this is the characteristic resistance of concrete cone failure. And this one is the area of single anchor. And this one is the area of the group itself, the full group of anchor together. So if we have two anchor, it will be two anchor, or if we have four or three, it will be three or four. But the main factor between both installed anchor and casting channel, the K factor here. The K factor when it is increasing, that means the casting channel resistance under tension is also increasing. So for both installed anchor in cracked concrete, it will be 7.7, .7, and in non-concrete, it is 11. While for the custom channel, you can see there is almost 10 or 15% higher value. So it's 8.9 for correct concrete and 12.7 for uh, non-correct concrete. And this is why uh, uh, custom channel, when you are uh, uh, doing the design at early stage and decide to use custom channel, sometimes it's difficult to replace with anchor because the capacity of the connection is higher. And it might be that you need to go for a bigger plates to distribute the load in a bigger area. And nowadays, uh, uh, thanks to technology, since uh, rivets uh, are already implemented in many of projects, so the level of coordination is high. That's why it's easy to install custom channel in the location with very few uh, uh, probability of mistake. And in future, they can install the plates and still if there's some mistakes because mistakes can happen. So there is the slots and uh, in the custom channel as Shino, Tino explained, which will allow you to have tolerance in both X, Y direction. Also, there is additional thing which uh, is a good part when you design according to custom channel, that codes allow you to use the existing rebar on the, on the concrete or supplementary rebar in the concrete to strengthen the cone or the concrete cone failure. So this part is not applicable for uh, post installed anchor, unfortunately, but it is there for custom channel, which give you additional capacity, which can increase the uh, connection uh, capacity for custom channel under tension and under shape. Also for, for example, when we are going for design of the T-bolt. So for the T-bolt, you will find there is a lot of variety in the approval. And in this approval, you will see here, there is a T-bolt uh, starting from M8 to M20, and the capacity is 8.8. .8. .8. So and directly is giving you how much is the maximum tension which T-bolt can take, and how much is the maximum shear resistance for the T-bolt. So this is one of the uh, last uh, check for uh, T-bolt under tension. And you, you see here the safety factor for uh, tension force is a little bit higher than the safety factor for shear force and is as per the standard. When we have a custom channel which is installed uh, with a bigger plate or plate with shim, in this case, we have one additional failure mode, which is interesting, the failure of casting channel under lever arm. So in this case, the shear force will not act only as the shear force in the bolt, but will have also additional bending moment in the body of the channel. So to make it also easy for calculation, so for it, each geometry, the distance between tension, uh, tension part and compression part, which is coming due to moment, is defined for the custom channel based on geometry as a factor A, this factor. So you can see here, the factor A depends on the geometry of the custom channel, how much, and depends on 
the size of the T bolt, how much. So if you have a higher uh, a higher standoff, so for example, if this distance is high, so all you have to multiply it by the shear force, and from this bending moment, we will have the tension force. And now we have to confirm if the lip of the cast in general will be able to take this tension force. So it is not only affecting the bolt, it's making effect also in the body of the cast in channel. Here is under compression and the lip also. So it has to be checked with the lip capacity how much. So that is the uh, part which is important also and sometimes it's ignored in the calculation, especially some uh, many designers we see they just calculate the custom channel, but in the site actual condition, they will have uh, some eccentricity below the plate and some shims, which will uh, can cause some issues in future. So it's important to check it in the United States itself. Uh, thank you to Fisher that uh, we introduced uh, Fisher software. So this Fisher software will reduce all this work. So you don't need to do all these checks manually. Uh, like if you need to do this checks manually, at least it will take one or two hours. And uh, usually after you do that check, all this, they might change some small factors, which you need again to redo it. So you can use Fisher uh, channel fix software, which is added to our Fisher uh, group of softwares. So every time we are adding some new softwares, it will come here. So this channel fix will allow you to easily uh, put all the geometry of the custom channel how many t bolt you have, what is the length of the custom channel, what is the dimension of the custom channel, uh, loads, and if, if you can just put the load at the exact location, and the software will automatically calculate how much is the additional bending moment due to eccentricity in this direction and due to eccentricity in this direction. So you not you are not required uh, to to recalculate the additional bending moment. You just have to take the reaction according to uh, your software, whatever you're using, SAB or STAD or RSAB or whatever. And you just apply in exactly the, the effect location or the center uh, of affecting uh, location of the loads. And software will calculate all the stresses automatically in each item and each component in the custom channel. And you will get uh, a lot of uh, variety in the software that you can use any types of plates, many types of plates which you usually used, uh, especially for facade. And you can change any, anything you need easily in the geometry. You can add more T-bolts, you can change the lens or whatever you want. And all other factor which is related to concrete, you can easily add it here in the, you can just go step by step design. And you, when you go step by step from uh, left to right, you will be able to finish the design fast and easy without forgetting anything. So you have to start by application, concrete information, reinforcement of information, then the plate information, fault information, loads. You just have to follow this flow chart or this procedure. Once you finish this one, you will automatically get the design. And you will get a complete, nice, detailed report. So it's not just a summary. You will find the complete report. And in this report, all the formulas which in code are there. And uh, in all this formula, you will find all the figure. So at any point of time, you can use the software even for, for training. So you can do the design by yourself. If you want to have more information or more training with, uh, about the code, and you can do the same case in the software and you can compare the figures. Or if the consultant or the structural engineer want to verify that uh, why I have this result or what is what is behind, so you can easily go number number and see what is exactly the problem in which area, and then we can change later on. So that is one of the advantage actually of our software that it gives you full details with the formula even. So that's why when you are using uh, the custom channel, you are uh, safe, of course. Uh, we have a lot of sizes available, lens uh, dimension-wise, cross-section-wise, uh, up to six meter lens we have. So it's, a, it's not a problem. Also, we can get it in curved, same like what you say. And the design will be according to uh, your code. And uh, if you need uh, any support in the design for uh, or economical solution, 
you can also get it from the software or you can get directly through official we can support on this uh, finally, I would like to say before we go to the question and answer, we have did uh, many projects in UAE. So uh, I am sharing with you some references and some uh, pictures from this. So this is the roller coaster uh, in Dubai Hills. The custom channel is installed here, upside down. So this is the anchor and this is the custom channel. And this is a residential uh, project in UAE where the custom channel is used for uh, unitized curtain wall facade. So you can see this is the custom channel. And here how it's installed, they connect it to the river. And here is one museum. Uh, the project, which I'm not saying the name, we need to get permission before we say the name, but I'm just sharing that it's a museum in Abu Dhabi. And uh, later on, once we get approval from the client, we can share the information. And uh, this is the central bank in uh, Istanbul, in Turkey, where it's also installed for uh, facade application. And uh, finally, this is also a curved custom shader, which has been used for uh, Metro application. Uh, I'm happy if someone has some questions, we are ready to answer. Thank you very much, uh, Mustafa, yeah, if, uh, for a very interesting talk. Um, if anyone has some questions, please just type it into the uh, the question and answer uh, box. And uh, just um, just there at the end, Mustafa, you showed the picture of the uh, the roller coaster in um, in in Dubai Hills. Uh, yeah. Interestingly, our CPD talk next week is on the on the design uh, of that uh, of 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 that that structure. So, people that are have uh, an eye for casting channels, they might they might see pictures of those channels uh, next next month as well. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> Yeah, actually, it's a very, very uh, interesting topic. And if someone wants me to share the approval, which you have more than, I think, 45 pages of details of the custom channel, step by step, how to do uh, the calculation, we can okay. really to share to you and you can share with all the, our participants. All right. Okay. No problem. Yes. And uh, anyone, if anyone has an unusual type connection, then I guess they can contact you uh, directly for assistance. Yes, they are welcome anytime. Yes, Okay. Um, yeah, we just have a, a three questions come in. Uh, the first question from uh, Ajit: uh, Can you have two casting channels in parallel to each other? If yes, what's the minimum spacing required? So I guess it's sort of similar to the chemical anchor bolts. There's a possibly a reduction factor. Yes, it's uh, possible to have two casting channels near to each other. And uh, the problem is not in the minimum spacing, it's here. So there will be interaction between each casting channel. So definitely there will be, there will be a reduction factor. Uh, this is not part yet of the software. So we have to calculate each case separately and we can calculate from the casting channel case itself, especially for the concrete failure, how much is the area for uh, one group. And we can divide by the area of the full group and use this factor as a reduction factor for the full capacity. So, for example, if this give us, for example, like 60%, so each connection, I will not allow the utilization to go more than 60%, or I will multiply it on 60% and uh, reduce it uh, further down. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, Next question from Shapur. Uh, can you please give us an idea on the cost and time required for delivery? Uh, delivery time for the casting channel? Uh, yes, I think so, yes. Uh, this is a good question. The casting channels, uh, it's mainly one of the most important items is the delivery because it's used in the concrete. And uh, usually, if, uh, uh, the main contractor, uh, civil contractor, will not wait anyone to, so he must have the cost in channel in, uh, in place. So we have some available stock from different sizes uh, in, uh, in Dubai, and we have some good stock <clears throat> in Germany. So once we needed some material, like for example, if you need 5,000 custom channels for a project, and at least you need to have 
four floors, either we manage from our uh, stock or either we get the, these floors by air and the other will come in normal delivery time from Germany to Dubai, which is comes usually five to six weeks. Okay, thank you. Um, question from uh, Ahmed. Uh, what's the range of yield strength provided for cold and hot roll channels? The, uh, the question is for the body of the custom channel itself? Uh, yes, I think so, yes, yeah. See, there is two things. If we are speaking about the uh, custom channel, usually we are using steel 8.8, .8, but steel 8.8 .8 is mainly for the main thing, which is the anchor of the custom channel. But when we are speaking about the uh, body of the custom channel, it's defined here in the approval how much is the maximum capacity of the connection. So it doesn't matter too much for you uh, to know how much exactly the yield strength. It's there also in the ATA. But the most important area that when you have tension force, cast and channel lip should not fail, cast and channel anchor should not fail, and uh, under bending moment, uh, how much will be the maximum capacity of the bending moment. So this information actually is not too much required for the design, but in case uh, he needs, uh, it's already mentioned in the ATA approval. Okay. Uh... Just going back to the previous question about the cost and time for deliver, delivery. Uh, yes. It was about the, the cost. Have you any uh, guidance on the cost of the product? Uh, we have a big range, uh, as Tino shared uh, before. So if we go for the range, this big range. But when you compare the cost of the cost in China, for example, with the cost of anchoring, you have to compare not only product to product, you have to compare the full application to a full application. Means for anchoring, you need to use a uh, drill bit and you need to use uh, labor for drilling. And usually from our survey, there is 30% chance that you hit a reverse. So the time is multiplied by 1.3 and the cost of the anchor bolt, of course, additional to the capacity. If you compare the full cost, that's the full cost of the custom channel, the custom channel will come cheaper around 20% than anchor port. But I cannot tell you now, for example, how much is the cost of one custom channel because it depends on the size. So based on the size of selection, based on cold rolled cold roll or hot rolled, we can give you a brief quotation based on any project. Okay, thank you. Um, question from Ramakrishna. Uh, in Canada, uh, we have a cold transfer problem. Um, minus 50 degrees to plus 50 degrees in the weather and the channel application uh, would not satisfy uh, thermally. Uh. <laughs> okay, that's a good question actually. Uh, in some projects, uh, let me just show you the plate here, uh, where we have uh, this thermal problem, it will be still there, but you can reduce it by add some thermal stop be below the custom channel, but still you have thermal bridge from the bolt, which cannot be avoided. Yes. Um, okay, so Shapur is uh, asking again, do you have a price list you can share with us? So, so possibly maybe Shapur would uh, um, maybe get in contact with you directly perhaps. Yes, yes, sure, yep. no problem. Okay. Uh, he can get uh, Tino email or my email and uh, we are ready in time to, to share with him. It's not a problem. Okay. Um, so Ahmed has just uh, put a suggestion in the box. Um, I would recommend that next time to repeat this webinar to show a quick example of connection with with post-installed anchor and a cast-in channel. So maybe two side by side. So the perhaps okay. the, easier to visualize the, the differences between the two, which is... Okay, that is also a good idea, yes. So you need to, to know the difference from design point of view or complete. Uh, the answer, uh, give it a little bit more detail. Okay, it's a, it's a good recommendation. We can do it. Uh, okay, uh, Gushan has... Um... Ask the question if there's not enough uh, spacing for the anchor inside the concrete, uh, is there an alternative solution? Uh, for post installed anchor? 
uh, this is going back to the uh, the casting channels. Uh, uh, so what is the question? Can you repeat? Like, if you have yeah. a spacing uh, between casting if, channels? If there's not enough spacing uh, for the anchor inside the concrete, okay. is there an alternative solution? So perhaps maybe if there's a lot of congestion or it's, it's cast into a thin a thin element. Okay, uh, uh, if I understand the question correctly, we uh, if the concrete is very thin that you cannot uh, both the casting channel actually have a wide range which have different anchorage lengths. So here you can see the range which Dino showed. One minute. So you can see many. Uh, yeah, here. Sorry. It's starting from small to big. So we can see based on the thickness of the concrete, up to 100 mm we can manage. Before, less than 100 mm we have to uh, make it case by case. But what I would like to say, even if you have non-standard case, but we have to know this one before because it will take some time for manufacturing. We have the ability to manufacture non-standard casting channels. So this is not a problem uh, because the casting channel is 100% reduced by fissure in our factory. So we have all the ability to make non-standard or non-standard lens, or maybe if uh, in some application, we faced that, uh, that we need to add more anchor here for the casting channel. This is also not a problem we can add. So if there is an application which requires non-standard item, depends on some special condition in the site, we can do it, but we have to know at least uh, three months in advance. So it should be in design stage. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Ahmed has just just responded regarding his uh, suggestion about the the presentation to to have like a, a cast in channel solution and a, a chemical anchor bolt solution. So I guess it would be like let's say you have a cast in channel solution that can carry five hundred kilonewtons. Um, what would what, how many bolts or whatever would be required for for to, to do the same thing so that you can visualize okay. the the difference in the two. Okay. Um, that is a good recommendation. Yes. Yes. Um, and Ahmed is always saying, uh, also asking, uh, is there a testing regime required after the the anchor is uh, is 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 cast? Like uh, for usually for chemical anchor bolts, so there'd be some testing pull out tests or something on on some of the bolts. Is there anything required for the channels? Usually the channel, since it is approved, it's not required uh, a test to proof. But if you need to make some uh, test, you can also do a test to be sure about uh, that the concrete is okay, uh, labor quality is okay. And there is some, uh, uh, we have also in the, our data sheet, we have some uh, few points which visualize by eye, you can see, and you can know if the custom channel is installed correctly, or there is some mistakes in the custom channel. And it depends on the criteria, there is a solution, what you have to do. Like for example, if the casting channel is very deep inside concrete for some reason, then uh, this is a problem. So the criteria is that you can put some shims or you can fill it by some uh, way. So th there is many things which can be uh, covered uh, during just uh, visual inspection. Uh, and if you need to make pull-out tests to be sure about the labor quality, it's also possible to do in casting channel. Right, okay, thank you. Um, Shapur is asking, what, what is the advantage of your system over your competitors? Uh, good question. Uh, the good advantage of our system against our competitor is that we have a very big wide range of our system. And what you have seen here, we have some custom channel which is bigger than all our competitors. So uh, which is even higher than load than all our competitors in the market. They don't have that size. So when we started the casting channel business, we study very good the competitors and we start first range, which is matching the competition. And now we have the second range, which have loads higher than the competition. So we have some solution which competition cannot offer for the casting channel. Okay. Especially for the big sizes. Okay, this thank is you. From, uh, yeah. uh, one minute, this is from load point of view. From a manufacturing point of view, uh, we have two main competitors without name. Some of the competitors are using welding between the bolt and the casting channel, and some of the competitors are using riveting. We are using dual system. 
which is combined between building, uh, uh, bolting and welding. That's why this connection in our casting channel is higher than the competition. Okay, thank you. That's good. Welcome. Um, that's all the questions in the that we've uh, we have at the moment. Um, just uh, just one question uh, that that I have. Uh, when you look up your your load tables, um, it gives the factor of safety uh, yeah. also. So you you divide the load by the like for there. I think you divide thirty one by by one point eight to get yes. the capacity. Yeah. Um, uh, on the other side, as engineers, when we work out our what load will be on the um, the anchor, let's say it's we work it out to be a hundred. There, there's factors of safety that we add, so we yes. would come to you with the ultimate load, as we say. So I take it then we the engineer gives you the the their their factored load, and then this thirty eight is divided by one point eight, and that's the the load that has to be. Um, designed for. Yes. yes. When you give me the load, ultimate load, you cannot compare the ultimate load with uh, characteristic load. You must use this load. This use that load. Safety factor is material safety factor. It depends on the type of the material itself. Uh, characteristic load, actually, it's ultimate load. So this is the minimum expected value for the failure load. So when you do actual test, you can have one failure, for example, here at 40 kilonewton, 35 kilonewton, but if you did 1 million tests, you will not get load less than 31 kilonewton. So this is the minimum expecting failure load, which is characteristic load. And from this one, we have to go, we divide by the material safety factor, okay. and this value we should compare with the ultimate load, which okay, we already Right. Yeah. Yes, okay, okay, that's clear. Yes. Okay. Um... If anyone else has any other questions. Okay, so so again, I assume if anyone has any questions or queries, they can uh, they can contact uh, contact you guys uh, uh, directly, and you'll be able to assist. Yeah, anytime. Yes. yes. Sure. Okay. Uh, just is there another question. Okay, some more more questions coming in, which is good. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> is there any particular material to be filled inside the channel uh, post concrete? No, not uh, required. Not, uh, not required to fill at all because the channel has to give you a tolerance in three directions, so you can easily uh, slide the T bolt in the casting channel. So filling is not required. Okay, okay. and. Uh, yeah, Shapur is just uh, just uh, uh, clarifying what we're saying. Normally, connection is designed to have a double factor: the ultimate load from the engineer, and then the um, used as the working load from them. So the normal yes. for for anchor design. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Ramakrishna is uh, saying excellent presentation. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Um. Okay, I think uh, I think that brings us to the end. It's a uh, very good timing. It's uh, eight eight o two. Um, oh, okay. So, <laughs> so so thank you very much, guys, for for coming and um, given given the presentation. It was uh, it was quite quite uh, informative. And uh, for everyone that's uh, online, if if uh, when you're at work tomorrow uh, discussing this presentation, you can remind everyone that. Uh, uh, a copy of the uh, of the presentation will be will be saved on the regional group uh, YouTube channel for Hi, Dick, for, uh, for, for future reference. Hi, Dick, sorry to interrupt. Hi. There's a question on YouTube actually. Oh, okay. How much is the thickness in micron or gram per square meter galvanizing coating? It's a question from Hemant. Uh, Tino, can you answer this question? Yeah, the standard uh, thickness, uh, what we specify is 55 micron. Okay, thank you. Uh, we've been getting this a little bit recent, recently. We get the uh, questions. We're also streaming live on YouTube, so some questions come uh, from, from, from that side as well, which is good. Uh, okay. okay.
<laughs> thank you very much, everyone. Uh, we'll we'll bring the session to a close. To a close. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Bye bye. Yeah, bye. Good night. Bye. Good night.